Hi everyone! This video is meant to help with the Alex topic, finding the slope, y-intercept, and equation for a linear function given a table of values. So first of all, they told us that this table represented a linear function, which means this is going to be a line when we graph it. Remember, you could of course always graph the points that were given, and you could determine that it will indeed uh, look like a line when you graph it if you wanted to. But you can also tell that by looking at the change in your y values and the change in your x values. And remember, this is what we refer to as the slope of the line. When we use that Greek letter, that triangle is the Greek letter delta, which represents the word change. It means we're really looking at the difference in the y values. You may have seen it as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over the difference in the x values. So if we were to take a look at how the x values are changing to go from negative 2 to negative 1, we're adding 1. From negative 1 to 0, we're also adding 1. From 0 to 1, and then from 1 to 2, you can see that you're adding 1 repetitively. So this is going to be the change in my x values. The change in my x values is 1. And likewise, we look at the change in the y values. So going from negative 1 to negative 2, you're actually subtracting 1. Negative 2 to negative 3, negative 3 to negative 4, and so on. And you see you have that consistency that you're subtracting 1 each time. So the change in your y values is actually negative 1. So if you were to look at the comparison between the change in y and the change in x, if we divide the two, that would be negative 1 over 1, which would give us a slope of negative 1. Now, if you would prefer to do this a different way, of course, you could also just pick any two points in the table. Let's say I pick the point here, 1, negative 4, and 2, negative 5. And you could also compute the slope that way, looking at these coordinates. So 1, negative 4, and the second coordinate, 2, negative 5. This is our first x-coordinate and our first y-coordinate, and our second x-coordinate and second y-coordinate. So if you're thinking of it as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, you could do it that way as well. That we're going to take negative 5, my y sub 2, minus negative 4, which is my y sub 1, divided by x sub 2, positive 2, minus x sub 1, positive 1. So that would be negative 5 plus 4, over 2 minus 1, which is 1, which would also give us negative 1 over 1, which is just negative 1. So you have a few ways of determining the slope when you're given a table of values like this. So we know that our slope is going to be negative 1. So moving on to the y-intercept. Remember that the y-intercept is the point where the line is going to cross the y-axis. So for example, if this is my line drawn here, then my y-intercept is this point here. And to get to that coordinate, you're gonna go up the way mine is drawn. And I'm not sure how many y values, how many units up we're gonna travel, but I do know that the x value is zero because I have not traveled to the left or to the right at all. So when you're looking to find the y-intercept, I always tell my students to let x equal zero. In other words, when x equals zero, the corresponding y value will always be the y-intercept. And you can see that here on the table, that when x is equal to 0, the y value is negative 3. So we know the y-intercept, it's given to us in this table, it is the coordinate 0, negative 3. Therefore, if you know the y-intercept and you know the slope, then the easiest form to use for a line is called the slope-intercept form. And the slope-intercept form of a line is the y equals m x plus b, where m is your slope. So in this case, if our slope is negative 1, that would be a negative 1 times x plus the y-intercept, and our y-intercept is negative 3. But if we simplify that, negative 1 times x could be written just negative x, and if we're adding negative 3, that's really the same as just writing minus 3. So this would be the slope-intercept form of our line, y equals negative x minus 3, which is what they're looking for when they ask for the equation for this line. Now, I'm also going to mention the other form that is one uh, that does get used, so you are familiar with it, which is often called the point-slope form of a line. 
And the point slope form of a line is y minus y sub one equals the slope times x minus x sub one, where again, m is your slope. But this time, the x sub one and the y sub one can be any point on the line. It doesn't have to be the y-intercept. It could be any point on the line. So in our case, we know that our slope was negative one. And then you could pick any coordinate. So I'm gonna go up to my table and just pick a random coordinate. I'm gonna pick this last one here. This point was positive two comma negative five. And I just wanna show you how I could write the equation for this line using point slope form. So that would be y minus the y coordinate of my point. So that's y minus negative five equals my slope, which is negative one times x minus the x coordinate of my point, which is two. So simplifying gives me y plus five equals negative quantity x minus two. This is the point slope form of the line. However, if you very quickly just distribute, you can put this in slope intercept form without too much trouble. Distributing gives us a negative x plus two and then if you just subtract five from both sides so that you're isolating y and getting y by itself, you're gonna end up with negative x minus three. So that is another way of finding the slope intercept form of the line. And then from here, you can see that indeed the y-intercept right there, the y-intercept was negative three. As a coordinate, that would be zero negative three. So you have two options when you're writing the equation for a line. You can use the slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, and that's gonna be useful when you know the slope and you know the y-intercept. However, point slope is an equally good form to use, and that's useful when you know the slope and you know a point on the line, and it can be any point. I hope that helps.